Okay, I've got to be honest here. Alpine are currently the most disappointing team right now in Formula One. Now this has nothing to do with on-track performance, but when you consider the resources they have, the drivers at their disposal, and their whole backing from the Renault group as well, Alpine are just bleak and they just can't seem to get it together. And it seems that ever since their rebranding from Renault to Alpine, it has just been in a downward spiral ever since. Now, okay, they have won a race and they have collected podiums, but the trouble is they never seem to build on these. They never seem to capitalize and grow from it. They just seem to be stuck in this sort of mediocre space where they just are stuck in inconsistency. The team also appears to be in a constant state of chaos and civil war, which otherwise has all the tools to be a major player in F1, as they have been before previously with Renault. They are punching really below their weight, and it's just disappointing to see a team with those kind of resources that teams like Sauber and Haas would die for just kind of squander them. And let's not forget that Alpine are a works team, and more importantly, they are a works team without any current customers for their engine. Now, what does that tell you? No other team on the grid wants any part of this right now, and none of them are convinced that they'd be better off with a Renault engine in the back. And due to the disappointments on the track and various issues in the team, they are currently very isolated in sixth spot in the Constructors' Championship. And they find themselves in a position now where they can't chase the midfield pack, they can't be caught by the back markers, they are just existing in this state of limbo right now. And considering last year, they were best of the midfield. They finished fourth last year, so to drop back to sixth, for them, this would be a huge financial hit for them. So something somewhere has gone badly, badly wrong for this team. So the general aim for Alpine was to become the French Ferrari. And this is a massive, massive statement and probably something that was cooked up by a boardroom at Renault Group who have just no idea what they're talking about. The Ferrari name and everything it stands for has grown organically for the best part of a century and it is just impossible to replicate or pay money to replicate this. This isn't something that you can just whip up and manufacture by painting your cars blue and insisting that the team is French, despite the cars actually being built in the UK but the engine side being built in France. It just doesn't seem to work. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the Renault name and I really kind of struggled to feel anything towards the Alpine F1 brand, to be honest. I can't seem to get any kind of connection to it at all. To me, like a lot of other F1 fans, this is Renault. This yellow and blue, this is what ev in everyone's minds is Renault F1. The Renault name was an absolute monster years ago, winning numerous championships as an engine supplier and winning two championships as their own team in 2005 and 2006 with Fernando Alonso. And Renault grew into such a powerhouse that this was the team that ended the dominance of Schumacher and Ferrari, and that is a huge claim. And I'm sure if handled properly, Renault slash Alpine could become this monster again if it just works out what it wants to be and is realistic about this. Don't be the French Ferrari, just be the French Alpine or the French Renault, that works perfectly fine. They decided to fire Otmar, which I think was a bit unfair, and he was also in the process of bringing in some big names to the team, much like it is in the Premier League. Now, managers in F1 seem to be coming and going a lot quicker than they used to be. Now, Alpine's 2023 has been very underwhelming and still kind of has this, like, this aftertaste of failure from the kind of contractual cock-ups that they had prior to the season. Fernando Alonso, who was probably the only interesting thing about Alpine previously, got fed up with all the delays and messing around and decided to go for a safe bet in Aston Martin. And Oscar Piastri, who was fed up with a similar treatment of delays and fannying around, he decided to move on to McLaren, where he would be respected and valued as a driver, rather than having the promotion to a race seat at Alpine, which was apparently part of his contract anyway. So the fact that he decided to straight up reject a race seat to Alpine, that tells you a lot. Now, one of the good things, or 
perhaps maybe the only good thing about Alpine right now is their somewhat capable driver lineup in Gasly and Ocon. Both are very capable of putting in some great drives on the day, but amazingly, it's only Mercedes, Red Bull and Ferrari that have this driver lineup of having two race winners in each car. And again, a massive thing to have as an asset, but Alpine are not using it properly. And both drivers, I think, are looking very lost right now. And Gasly in particular looks very, very downtrodden. I do wonder if both of them are kind of keeping an eye elsewhere on the grid at the moment for when seats might pop up. Now, signing Gasly was a very good move in terms of bringing a capable driver on board, but there seems to be this history between Ocon and Gasly that is just dividing the team and creating this tension. And considering what the team is currently going through at the moment, the first place you can begin with to create a peace and harmony has to be the driver lineup. And it's very public that Ocon and Gasly are not best buddies and are just straight up not happy to do favors for each other. I mean, look at the incidents in Japan where Alpine decided to switch the cars around. But in my opinion, I think that it is Ocon that is the weakest link in the driver lineup as it seems to be him that is having the incidents and that is costing Alpine points. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm watching a race and you hear yellow flag Alpine, my mind straight away just says, Ocon. Yeah, and Gasly has had some incidents as well, but for me, I just think that Gasly is the superior driver compared to Ocon right now. So Alpine has to decide what's more important to them right now. Having an all French driver lineup, which don't enjoy cooperating together and create this tension, can't stand the sides of each other and actually take points off each other in some instances, or bring in someone new that will help create a very harmonious driver lineup. As I said, what's the quickest way to create harmony in an otherwise divided team? Start with the drivers. And when you talk about division at Alpine, it gets worse when you actually look at reports from what is actually going on in the team or more specifically the UK part of the team and the French part of the team. And there was an article produced saying that for Grand Prix that the French and the UK sides of the team stay in separate hotels and do everything completely separately and only come together on race weekends. Now no one actually confirmed or denied this but when you see something like this and you look at how Alpine are you can't help but think that there is an element of truth to this. And even efforts to bring the team together have just been so cringe and awkward, even making reference to the fact that the Hundred Years' War is over and that Britain and France are now friends, and it's just very... Ugh. Even the factor of two languages fighting for supremacy in the workplace and at Grand Prix weekends has got to be exhausting and it's got to actually slow down the team considerably compared to all the others. So if you are part of Alpine or ex-Alpine, please get in touch because I would love to hear from you and hear what is actually going on. But you can kind of see how Terry, let's let's call him Terry. So Terry has been working at Enstone for 30 years. He started at Benetton, which moved to Renault, which became Lotus again, and then back to Renault. And Renault was a nice mold between the UK and French way of doing things and it all kind of seemed to work. And then it's rebranded as Alpine and everything is chucked out the door and made entirely French. Now you can kind of see how Terry would be rubbed up the wrong way by this. And then vice versa, you have a chap called Jean who's worked at Renault F1 engine since the 90s. And Jean has been tasked with turning Alpine F1 into Grand Prix winners, but those British guys in the Enstone factory won't cooperate and won't buy into the vision. So now Jean is annoyed by this whole thing. And then you see how the two sides of the team are just fighting with each other. You can see how the frustration just kind of goes both ways. And this is the problem, I think, with modern teams trying to fly under the flag of a single country. It just, unless you're Ferrari, it just doesn't seem to work anymore. Now, one of the other good things with Alpine right now is the amount of investment that the team is currently seeing. With Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney investing $218 million, as well as a consortium of sports stars investing a further $200 million. Kind of got to ask yourself, why? Are Renault Group hoping to offload their F1 operation or hoping just to kind of split the risk a little bit? Or perhaps Alpine need the money so that they can move their entire F1 operation over to France and become Alain Le Bleu. And when you consider their mission statement of becoming the French Ferrari, this is perhaps the only way to do it because like a lot of other F1 fans, the only proper, proper French team out there 
was Ligier. You could not get more French than Ligier with Panis at the wheel and Gouloir sponsorship all over the car. But with all this investment, it does seem a bit like there might be too many cooks in the kitchen at this point. And even with all this money coming in, I'm not sure it's going to bring Alpine the success it wants unless there is a serious overhaul of the culture and management at the team. So moving on to 2024 and beyond, it's going to be very interesting to see where Alpine wind up and in what form as well. And they might be in big trouble because you've got Williams who are on the up and up, you've got Alpha Tauri or whatever they're gonna be called next year. They're going to be running a B-spec of the current Red Bull car, which is just a beast right now. They're gonna have two more teams taking points off them if they don't step it up. And if they're not careful, they could easily wind up in eighth position next year. Now, the other thing is in 2024, there are going to be a lot of drivers coming to the end of their contracts, including Gasly and Ocon. Now, if Alpine have an awful 2024, I can't see Ocon and Gasly looking to hang around or keep Alpine as their first choice of team. However, this could create as a chance for Alpine to create some harmony with their drivers and bring in two guys who can just do the business and cooperate and do what is best for the team. And also right now, and I touched on this earlier, that Renault currently do not have any customers for their engines in F1. And they may face an enormous problem because you've got the powerhouses of Audi and Ford coming in in 2026. We don't know what form Ford is gonna be in right now, but their logo is going to be in F1 at least. You know, huge names in motorsport with huge knowledge and resources to draw upon Renault Group are really going to have to sort themselves out and figure out how they are going to overcome this. If they are going to compete and succeed in Formula One, they will have to do something drastic. Now, in my opinion, I think it's inevitable that Alpine will return to being branded as Renault in Formula One. The whole Alpine thing, to me, it seems like Renault is on a gap year or something where it's just trying something new. It's trying to experiment with doing something a little bit differently. But with these two automotive powerhouses coming in in 2026, potentially followed by even more after that, Renault Group can't afford to mess around with these this silly little cult car company that they're trying to push in Alpine, they are gonna to have to rebrand back to Renault because that is a monstrous name in itself. And the fans know this, they connect to it. They can be represented by this. You know, Alpine have a good history in rallying, but they sell just a single car and they make concepts of EVs for the future, but this just doesn't stand up. In fact, that's it. I've just solved it right now. So what's gonna happen is Alpine are going to be rebranded as Renault and then Alpine are going to be moved over to Formula E where they can do all their EV stuff and do all their marketing stuff towards EV. But this is it, this is the issue that Alpine faces. They've got all the tools, all the resources, all the money as well to compete and be a front running team. They have just been slowed down by the culture and management and just some poor decisions. Like they have everything they need to be back up in fourth place and beyond if they really, really push themselves. But yeah, I don't know, just rebrand as Renault, connect with the fans again, and yeah, you'll be all right. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I'm Paul, and many thanks for watching.